Guys, what's up? Welcome to DJ TLM TV. I'm DJ TLM, and this is part one of my scratch tutorial series. Now, in the next couple of videos, I'll focus mainly on the foundation, the basics of scratching, and after that, I will get into some more advanced techniques as well. If you're just starting out with scratching, or if you've never scratched before, this is where you need to start. You can't run straight away, you gotta learn how to walk first. And in order to learn how to walk, you gotta start with baby steps. And when it comes to scratching, your first step is the baby scratch. If you want to use the sounds and beats that I'm going to use in this tutorial, the download links will be in the description down below. And anytime I drop a new tutorial and use new sounds and new beats, I'll make sure that they're available to you to use. You can use any sounds and any beats you want to, but if you want to use the sounds and beats that you hear in these tutorials, I got them for you. For the baby scratch, we're going to focus strictly on the player, the platter, and the hand movement. And in my case, the player is a turntable, but you could use a controller or a CD player like a CDJ just as well because the fundamentals are the same for all these devices. The mixer is only here right now to make sure that the sound goes to the computer and the speakers, but I'm not using the mixer for scratching right now, so I'm not going to talk about the mixer or the faders in this video. Let's focus on the baby scratch. Now, as you saw, the baby scratch is the most basic movement in scratching. It's moving the platter back and forth. That's all it is, but it's not as easy as it looks. I mean, anyone can move the record back and forth, but especially when we start to add the beat and you have to maintain a certain rhythm it gets a little bit more tricky and that's why it's so essential that you have to practice that baby scratch to make sure that you really know how to do it before you start to work on other scratches. So the platters will be different on the turntable and on the CDJ and on the controller but the techniques are the same and when it comes to the first technique it's about holding the platter. This is where personal preference comes into play because there's not one right way to do it. You got to figure out what works for you. In my case, I use my two fingers right here to apply the pressure to move the platter back and forth. And I'll, I don't know, I always start with like four fingers on the vinyl, but as soon as I start to move, these two fingers leave the vinyl and I only use these two fingers. But I've seen people use their entire hand, just one finger, or even hold the side of the vinyl So there's all kinds of techniques you can try. In my case, I like to keep it comfortable. This position is not comfortable for me. I like to have my arm in a normal way and I found that if I have my whole hand on the platter, I have less control. That's why I only use a couple of fingers, but find out what works for you. And it all depends on what you're using. I'm using real vinyl, control vinyl on a turntable, so I have a lot of room to move. A CDJ is smaller and you have a lot of controllers that have like really small jog wheels so you won't even be able to use your whole hand. You probably have to use one or two fingers anyway. And if you're using a turntable, watch out with your movements that you don't go too far, otherwise you'll bump into your tone arm. So it's a back and forth movement. Find out how much pressure you have to apply. and try to get a steady flow going. At first you can try this without the beat just to get used to the feeling of moving it back and forth. And once it starts to feel comfortable, you can try different tempos because you can take it slow. You can speed it up. Or you can start to try faster and slower. So. There's all kinds of things you can do, but start just by moving that back and forth. It's going to feel a little bit boring, and once you feel that you get the hang of it, add a beat. That's going to change the entire dynamic of the situation, because now you have to make sure that you stay on beat. 
So this is a mid-range tempo, it's not too fast. You can experiment with different tempos, but when you first start out, take a beat that's not too fast. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make sure that I rhythmically move back and forth on beat. Start slow. Now a little bit faster. Now you'll notice that as soon as you start to do it with a beat, it gets a little more difficult, but that's why you need to practice that a lot. I'm using vinyl and I have a little sticker right here and that shows me, it's my visual aid to show me where my sound begins and that helps because I know how far I have to take the record back in order to get to the beginning of the sound again. I have a sticker tutorial that you can watch to see how you can do that with vinyl and that's for real vinyl or a digital vinyl system. If you're using the CDJ, then you have the display in the middle of the platter and you have that little light that goes round and that's the same basic principle as a sticker. And some controllers do have a light that goes on the outside of the jog wheel, the platter, and that serves the same purpose as well. If you use a controller and you do not have this visual aid, this light, then you're gonna have to look at your computer screen. I mean, if you're practicing at home, that's all good. If you're doing it in a live situation, it's not a good look if you're looking at a screen while you're scratching, but if you're practicing, look at your screen if you don't have that visual aid on the platter. So that helps me to see how I have to do my movement. As you might have noticed, I did not power up the turntable. I mean, the power is on, but I'm not actually making the record spin right now because for this first movement, it's not even necessary because we're not practicing letting the sound go yet. It's all about that movement. And when you're doing the baby scratch, your hand is not even leaving the vinyl. So I don't have to turn this on and in this case, I'm kind of simulating what people with CDJs and controllers have because your platter does not move. So this way you can tell that you can use it with any device. So these are the first basics of scratching. Practice that baby scratch without a beat, with a beat. Try different beats. If you only have one beat, you can of course adjust the pitch to make it slower or faster. But if you wanna have an even slower beat, you probably have some music at home, some instrumental music that you could use as well. This is step one. I'll be back real soon with step two. If you have any questions, just email me djtlmtv at djtlm.com. Practice and share the knowledge. Peace out.